Hello, Agus Falcha. This is Andrew Butler, and today I'll be going over this flower drawing, which had about three iterations, hence why the video is a bit long for the lack of complexity of the final piece. This one had a lot more back and forth than the requests I've done, where I've been getting feedback throughout. They wanted a design made up with intertwined poppy, yellow rose, and pansy. It was an interesting experience, as initially I showed some examples of details from other artists' designs and went ahead with doing the initial design, after getting approval from them. Initially, they wanted it to be rather simple, so it was going to be flat colours with flat shading elements and I ploughed ahead doing the design. I really struggled for a little bit initially getting the rose done, which is part of a growing realisation that I'm really out of practice in a lot of my drawing subjects, as I haven't really drawn a great variety of things in the last few years, and only really in two styles. That being the Ninkalim, or Armoured Rodent series of characters, which I aim to return to once I've done a bit more work in terms of improving my workflow and my knowledge of my tools. And the other style being my product design sketch style, which is just pen drawing, which is more to block out ideas quickly and to make them stand out on the page. I haven't really done much in terms of studies for a long time, and my ability to draw these forms has slipped away due to that lack of practice. Focusing on drawing a variety of different subjects at the moment really is to try and help me get better at quickly creating a multitude of designs and then being able to execute the finer details of those sketches soon afterwards. I did eventually work out the rose, but did have to shorten it somewhat in the line art opposed to its sketch form as I noticed it had elongated and doing so let me bring it more into line with its two neighbouring flowers. I should mention quickly why I did the composition of the flowers as I did. It was largely to help with the readability of the flowers, as the pansy really is only readable from direct on, whilst the rose and the poppy are recognisable at a greater variety of angles. So the initial plan was side profile of a flower, front profile of a flower, side profile, as to mirror around the pansy. The stalks were arranged in an attempt to ape some Art Nouveau flower stamps arrangements, and I tried to compose them within a circle to give it a more interesting sigil effect arrangement than the three stems just coming together. These two decisions wound up being the two main requested changes, with the first request being to change the poppy profile to show the inside of the poppy more. This led to a few false starts where I acquired a reference image, tested how that form would work with my sketch and decided to go with another. I'm quite happy with how the flower head came out in the end, but it did also lead to me fumbling with a second set of colour masks on top of my previous one, which caused me a lot of confusion because I forgot what was layered where and generally just a few other silly oversights. But once I had that done, recolored and done a little shading on the stems, which on a side note I wasn't super happy with, I managed to finish the piece after also going back over the line art to give it a bit more variation in its line weight. Before I showed it to the client, I was already kind of off in terms of how the stem design came together and felt that the flower heads might be a little too clip arty in style, if you can catch my drift. I'd also say that the flowers weren't really sized together correctly. They weren't consistent in that way. They were fun practice in terms of doing block shadows, but the overall product looked better in my head than in its final execution. So I go and show it, and I then discover they had a more intertwined idea for the stems. I asked whether a Celtic knot design was the sort of thing they were after, which they agreed with, and I set off back to work after also discussing whether they still wanted the same level of detail within the shading. I redrew the flower heads with better line weights and equalising the scale of each flower using the previous drawings of mine as my reference. Doing this, I managed to get them done far quicker allowing me to turn my attention to trying to create a knot design that could have three lines feeding into it. Most Celtic knot work, from my experience, has either 
one continuous loop that forms two overlapping lines, or two loops that form four overlapping lines in pattern. This is where I desperately look for one of the best artistic reference and construction volumes I've ever owned. This set of books being the nine volume booklets of Pictish Knotwork by George Bain, one of the first historians to extensively investigate and take rubbings of the Pictish stones in the northeast. I believe I originally got it from Grome House's stall at the West Highland Folklore Museum back when I was in my early teens, and was fantastic at breaking down how to construct these patterns from real examples on stones. I have made art using these before, but without the incredibly extensive resource, I had to find some of the examples I wanted and then figure out my best approaching angle to entangle a furred vine. In the end, I went for a relatively common, simple, but visually appealing pattern and open one end of it to allow the flower heads to attach onto them. This does in effect mean they are both attached to the one stem, one on one side and one on the other. I used circles to help with the spacing, as well as duplicating the initial sketch and lowering it down. This let me make a more rounded, overlapping pattern come from the third flower. It isn't really fully uniform all the way through, which would be the aim generally for patterns like this but I feel that the way it's displayed, it might be good that it's slightly imperfect, as it gives this feeling of being formed like that, almost a peculiar loose basket weave. Of course, others' mileage may vary in terms of whether that's a nice touch or just an excuse for the catalog of inaccuracies. I also enjoy the mixture of burning and glowing colouring that I did for the shading of the flowers and stems which came from an earlier piece that I discussed. Though I could have made use of the lasso tool to make it a bit cleaner for some of the more complex shapes, this is definitely something I will have to keep in mind going forth. Between these changes for the client and by discussing them, I came out with a much nicer piece in the end. It did mean that I took the longer route, and I'd probably recommend doing thumbnails instead of just diving straight in like I did. I will likely be doing this for the next selection of requested pieces I'm going to be doing. This was an interesting journey doing this piece, which looks very simple on the face of it, but I greatly enjoy the results and the experience. I hope this was at least a little bit interesting to you guys, and thank you for listening to me ramble on for a few minutes. Martian Leventrust
I know I've already said goodbye, but um, I'll give a little teaser for what should be coming up soon. There should be a large double portrait in an Art Nouveau style, a number of small character designs in the Bubble style, as well as a teacup dragon and one punch man done bumbly. Most of these have all been requested, I have a couple of my own inventions in there. So if you're interested in any of those, uh, stick around and they should be up soon. Cheers!